Good morning, my friends. It's me, Ruthie Popel at the Popel Backyard Farm. Today I'm going to show you a new Bible. Not new, I've had it, but you would, might not have seen it. So it's a review. And uh, this is the Jesus Bible. This was gifted to me by my mom a while back. I'm using it as a journaling Bible. So it's got different things. It's the NIV version. Just a quick little flip through, but I'll show you the things I like about this. Now, this morning I was reading in 2 Samuel, and I believe it was 728, talk, talking about King David and how he asked God for to build him a house. And God said, no, your son's going to build it. But God gave David a house, meaning his family went on and on forever, and the Jesus came from the line of King David. So you can check that out. But I'll show you this version. I'll start here at the beginning. Um, this I got. I wrote in myself. This is like all the prophets. And some were big deals. And some were little fry. And who they prophesied. I wrote that in there. So let's see. This is the NIV. It has like uh, welcome and little things, little uh, write-ups and things. But what I like about this Bible, it talks all about Jesus. So it talks about him being our creator. It has um, like little articles, tons and tons of little articles and comments. And it's really nice if you're reading Death Reigns Until Christ. You know, just all kinds of uh, the revolt. This is like the beginning of, you know, Genesis and beginning of creation and and that. And I was playing with stickers in this one a little bit. I had a ton of stickers. And, you know, if you decide to get into Bible journaling, whether you use a notebook and decorate in the notebook or your Bible, it's really up to you. The main thing is that you get that word of God in you and you've learned it. And you know it like the back of your hand, you know, so that, uh, especially since I believe we're living in the last days, and the Bible talks about lots of people are going to come up and deceive people. But if you know the word, I always say, study like 98% of the word, <laughs> and you know, and then other things. Then if somebody tells you something wrong, you're going to know. But uh, lots, see how the nice little articles in here. And uh, it's really a nice Bible. I like the cover. It's just like this nice cloth cover. Um, you could probably pick this up on Amazon and probably that might be where my mom got it. It's got glitter in here. <laughs> Sometimes when I'm working on glitter, which I'm working on another Bible over there. Um, if I have extra glitter, I just kind of like put it in the Bible. I don't know. It'll get spruced around. Um, then, like I said, lots of articles. Then it also comes with, which I'll show you this too, a nice bookmarker now I added a bookmarker just so you can see this like if you get ribbon I mean sometimes even your clothing has ribbon on it or you buy it and then just I just stick my finger down there and use a glue stick and stick it in there and then um, so it's all the conversion just see lots and lots of nice notes and I'm gonna you know work on this one I'm not gonna glitter this Bible um, I don't have this version, and I do have a lot of glitter Bibles right now, um, if you want to look at how I did that, um, which I will caution you, don't use a Bible you super, super love, because if it tears your pages, unless you're going to do something with the ends of the pages, my mom gave me this. So this is uh, David Jeremiah. So I like him. He's got a book out, Signs. I want to pick it up at the library. I, I get things at the library, Christian books and stuff, because I just... Once I read a book, I usually don't read it again. And if I can get it from the library, that's better. Um, but see, this is my other bookmarker. See how nice I just kind of measure it out? And it looks pretty in there. My favorite color is pink. And uh, let's see what I have notes in the back. I was, uh, oh, I got this from a book too. I am a pre trib and a pre millennialist. <laughs> <laughs> and eschatology, if you don't know what that is, that is the study of, there you see it, it's a fancy term for the study of prophecy. And this also has a concordance in it. 
And I hope that when I do these reviews and things that you learn something new each time. I mean, I, I'm always learning and growing. I mean, whether you learn a new passage, you learn a new word, you learn um, about a new Bible, um, you learn something from the Bible or a new site. I, uh, I'm i sorry, I can't remember who it was. One of my followers suggested eSword. I was looking at that. That's um like a Bible app. I think you have to have an iPhone or something. I don't have an iPhone, so I loaded it on my computer. Then it can load for free on there. And I think there's a group on Facebook, too. I don't know a whole lot about it. I just started looking at it. But I like um, Bible Hub. I like a lot, and I like Gateway a lot, just so you know, in case you haven't played with any of those apps. Those I have on my tablet, because what happens is, is if I load up my phone with too many things... Um, it gets just too full, so I mainly have like YouTube and things like that on there, but I use my tablet for the other things. It makes my battery and everything last longer because I'm like have a lot of stuff I like to do. And, um, but, and I want to mention this too, because, um, I haven't really heard him preach before, but I heard, knew he was out there, but Fred Price Jr., and I heard him yesterday and I just loved his preaching. So if you have not heard Fred Price Jr., I guess um, the father, I think, passed this year. Um, check out him. And I know a lot of people like Charles Stanley's son, Andy Stanley, which I have to listen to him some, too. I haven't heard him, but I really enjoyed listening to Fred Price Jr. So if you like Bible preaching, these guys are all on YouTube for free. So you can check them out. And it's like reading the commentary, learning. He had a lot of good things to say. So I enjoyed that. So... Um, I, I do enjoy, I mean, I am a YouTube person. I love watching YouTubes. So, but, uh, so this is this Bible. I really like it. It has some wide margins, but a lot of the margins do have writing in them. But you can also take like a piece of parchment paper or something and just have it in there. And then it can like go over if you want to write notes or something or you want to draw a picture. Another way, you might have to take your cover off your Bible after a while if you get like me and they get the stew so full. But um, I hope this helps you. Now, um, if you're curious about me, I am a born-again, spirit-filled Christian. I accepted Jesus as my personal Savior when I was five. If you are interested in becoming a born-again Christian, um, the Bible says if we confess our sins, you know, ask Jesus in our heart, you know, you could be born again, and the Bible says you must be born again. So I will pray this simple prayer with you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just repeat these words after me. I ask that you would forgive me for my sins and that you would come into my heart and be the Lord of my life and help me to learn more about you and to grow in you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And if you really meant that, Welcome to the family of God, right? <laughs> and um, I suggest, if, like I always say, if you want to be like me, um, if you're looking for some Christian friends and fellowship, sometimes it's good to get, um, how do I put it? I always have been the type of person I like to have tons of friends and people out there. I think it's healthy for me, my personality. I always say I work in multiples, but end up with individuals, so to speak, like a funnel. You know, everything kind of is wide and then it flows down, but... I would suggest a Baptist church or Assembly of God if you want to be like me. I like those denomin or those churches because the reason I say it like that is because a lot of times it's like somebody might accept Christ and they're like, I don't know where to go, but I yeah, those are pretty good. I suggest going to two or three and finding the shoe that fits you. Um, that way you find the church that you like, the pastor and everything that you just feel like this is home. And uh, make some friends in church. It's really good for you and it's good, you know, for you and your family, make some new friends, get a little perspective of, you know, life. And, and I always think it's good to grow in your life. And, uh, I have a great church that I go to and I love it, but I have lots of church friends all over the church communities from different churches I've gone through through the years. You know, if you move or maybe you go to a church for a while and it just feels like, you know, I just don't feel like this is you know, that I feel like God's moving me on, you know, and I always believe that when you leave a church, always leave in a nice, kind way, you know, if you feel like God is moving you on for some reason. And sometimes that happens. Maybe your work schedule's not working out, you know, maybe it's too far and you got a church right down the street that's closer, you know, those types of things. And um, sometimes, I guess I'll share this too, that sometimes even if church is hard for you, if you go um, 
you know, try to go as often as you can, but some people can only go to church once a month. Some people um, can go every service. It all works on you. So, But I do believe in going to church because the Bible says to forsake not the assembling of t together of the brethren. And there's pastors and teachers and people in there. And I know that when I go to church, there's other people in the church that will have like something for me, you know, <laughs> and I have something for them. You know, it's like maybe I might, you know, say a nice word to someone or give someone a smile. So I don't believe that you know, I know we're living in troubling times, and I think that some people, they they may never be able to go to church, and I think God isn't, I mean, anytime you're with another believer, you know, their God is in the midst of you, but some people, if you cannot go to church, maybe you don't have a way, maybe you don't drive, there are tons of churches online as well, and uh, a lot of them have, like, they talk, they're on Facebook. I mean, there's ways to connect, but you have to, you know, work that out, you know, where you feel you are with that. And I'm, like I said, uh, no condemnation. We're living in troubling times and that's something you have to work out with the Lord. But I say it that way to say, go to church, don't go to church, just as long as you hook up with some believers, I guess, is what I guess I want to encourage you. Okay, guys. Um, and like I said, it's good to go to physically to church if you're able. But if not, hook up with some people online that, uh, you know, there's probably a nice church locally that might even be online, you know. But you, you know, like I said, that you got to work out. But anyway, um, with that, that's my review of the Jesus Bible in the NIV version. And you should be able to get this right on Amazon. Okay, guys, remember, big or small, you too can be a backyard farm. God bless.